It's funny. Oh, if, <laughs> oh no. Oh, before I even see your face. <laughs> so evil. Why is it so uh, yeah, evil? for the listeners, I, I see Walker cannot see what's in preview. He can only see what's in program, meaning what's right. about to go it's on the It's a dirty screen. trick is what it is. Right. And so I just went ahead and had the NBA draft lottery simulator ready to go out of the break. I've got it. <laughs> I want to get through it quick because I know you want to talk about Tepper and Jordan and all of that great conversation. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this tankathon sim the lottery. Beep, boop, 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 beep. And the Hornets are oh they're thirteenth and fifteenth again. Yeah, I they are it, who we they are who we thought they were. Yeah, I feel it. I think it's in the next couple of episodes. I swear we're going to win. I know it. I feel it in my heart. Uh, and so we can go to the mock draft just really quickly. Thirteen. They still have Mark Williams. <laughs> we're going to have the same players. A Duke, Duke center. <laughs> A Duke yes. center. That uh, that I mean, look, four point three blocks per game. That's pretty yeah. insane. Mark is and good. I'm getting talked into the commenters. The YouTube commenters are talking me into the the player that they have ranked sixteenth here, Jeremy Sochan. Again, don't know if I'm saying his name right or wrong. I'm still I'm doing the research. Mm-hmm. I'm getting to it. Uh, but he's out of Baylor. Uh, just, we just long athletic defense. I just I feel good. He was about and he was fun to watch in that UNC game. Uh, yeah, you know he was kind of like a, a villain in a good way, like a basketball villain. So he had some some edge and some attitude. So good. That's what we I, need. I think That's that what would this be good team for this needs. Team. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I just think, Doug, as you talk about <clears throat> needing to do more research, all you need to do is just more research on the 13th and 15th pick here every single time. Like, as long as you have Williams and Egbazi down, then you're going to be good. That's the only thing you need to know. So we can continue right. to talk about oh, that. Um, all right, let's talk about the news. that Yeah, please do. Let's talk about the news that just came out from the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers, they've told Rock Hill that they are ending their agreement to build their practice headquarters there. For those that don't know, David Tepper, York County, the city of Rock Hill, they came to an agreement that they were going to have their practice facilities there, which in turn, the city was also going to build a village, and it was supposed to be this boom for the economy. And in the agreement, Rock Hill was going to try to pay for a portion of it, and they didn't hold their end of the bargain. They tried to come up with a new funding approach, and then... David Tepper just refused to speak to the city, like wouldn't put out a public statement for a long time, would not contact county or city officials. Just you did not hear a peep, much like you don't hear from him on the Deshaun Watson front or the fact Mm. that the Carolina Panthers are a dumpster fire in some respects. Mm. You can't hear from him in any regard. Well, finally, the Panthers, they released a statement and they in, in the end, they just said they're ending their agreement and maybe there is a potential a, a shot of this happening again, Nick. I know you read it as well. Is that right? Like, they're, well, they've formal. They're they're formally terminating the agreement. So, right. I, I don't know where that goes from there. I mean, maybe there's some sort of emergency, you know, <laughs> emergency funding that the state can provide to to Rock Hill and York County at this point because this just seems dead in the water. And if you've driven by that place or seen the images. Uh, it's, it's not just a few, uh, few nails in the ground. I mean, this, <laughs> no. this thing is like, that was a terrible construction reference, by the way. I don't know why you would put nails, nails in the ground. Do you put nails in the ground? Like what do you, <laughs> well, look, you know, <laughs> you strong, building? strong <laughs> winds, building? strong winds that might yeah, blow yeah, over yeah. the practice yeah. facility. You need but to nail it to it, the ground. And, yeah, and David, tent? <laughs> David Tepper, those are stakes. <laughs> David Tepper has not said anything. Stakes are just big nails. Don't come on. Listen, don't come on here with your, you know, big news suit. Go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. Please finish your thought. I apologize. David Tepper is now going scorched earth in the statement. uh, He said, or Tepper sports and entertainment technically says, let's see. It's unfortunate that some recently decided to conduct a misguided, destructive public relations campaign to obscure their failures. Talking about the city and the company that they're working with. And they're formally terminating these previous agreements. So this is so. Uh, I mean, bottom line, bottom line, it's a disaster. And a just, disaster. I'm not like a huge Carolina Panthers fan, but just from the outside, like Tepper and the Panthers have been in a lot more negative headlines than positive headlines. And on the other side, Michael Jordan, owner of the Charlotte Hornets, I feel like has been both from a just a, a PR perspective, but also from an organizational perspective, have been in a lot more positive headlines than negative headlines. And, and this is the thing, you know, to try to transition this because this is a Hornets podcast, right? Like in the city, there has been so much talk over the past decade of how truly awful an owner Michael Jordan is in a lot of different fronts. But I think a lot
lot of that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of that has been really focused on the operation side of things, right? That Michael would meddle in basketball operations. You wanted to draft certain players over a rich Joe or over anybody, a part of that decision-making process. And that was more of the focus. I could talk about MJ all day long, trying to shorten this up. But my fascination with MJ is when we watch the last dance, you see all of the things about Michael, not necessarily wanting to contribute to anything outside of basketball, right? He had the famous quote, Republicans buy shoes too, when he refused to endorse Harvey Gantt in the Senate race. And that was just a wrong decision for him. So Michael now has done so much for the community, opening Novant Health Clinics in poverty-stricken areas of the city. And he's crying during the openings of these because he Mm -hmm. genuinely cares. He donated $150 million over the course of a decade to charities that benefit African-Americans here in the country and here in the city and wherever. And it is the largest donation to uh, do- it is the large donation made by any kind of business or any person to charities that benefit African American funds. Like what Michael is doing is doing a complete 180 in what you thought of him based on his playing days to now. And here he is, where I, I do feel like he's allowed Mitch Kupchak to take more control over personnel decisions. I'm not saying MJ is completely out of it, I'm saying that I think Mitch Kupchak does have a pretty decent amount of control, certainly way more than Rich Cho ever had. All of this to say, like, there is pretty clearly leaps and bounds, a better owner here in the city with Michael Jordan, and it is a dumpster fire. Like, David Tepper is a, he is a real problem. Certified gamer for Terry Rozier, certified problem for David Tepper and the Charlotte Hornets. Oh, it's huge. And I think Michael Jordan, man, like, I just... I've just really enjoyed watching what he's been able to accomplish over the last five years and kind of the transformation of one MJ. Yeah. I think the the Hornets are viewed by this city and the leaders of it in a very positive light. Uh, like you said, a lot of it is just basketball operations related. He has, they have shifted their draft philosophy. Sure. I'm not sure they've shifted. He's shifted his luxury tax philosophy just yet. We'll That's see right. if, if they get to that point where he always said, okay, then I'll go over it. We'll see. We'll see how he reacts to that moment. But, you know, I, I credit Fred Whitfield and the people that help him run that organization with Absolutely. Uh, keeping it a, a, you know, contributing part of this city, a, a, you know, kind of cohesive and collaborative part of this city where you can't really say the same for David Tepper at this point. It's a total 180 flip from, I would say, I don't know, five, 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. it's no, it's insane to me <laughs> um, how much it's flipped. In fact, when you talk to people now and someone says, you know, mentions like Michael Jordan being a bad owner or, or saying, you know, he's meddling. I feel like it's a great marker of someone who's not paying attention mm-hmm. to what's currently going on. And, and I couldn't have said that, you know, again, five, 10 years ago, they would have had, they, they would have had, a, even if they weren't even paying attention, they would have had somewhat of a point, but they don't have that point anymore. And um, yeah, I, I think that's a positive thing for the organization overall. Yeah, it, it is. And, and just to see, you know, how this has all come down for Carolina. Like, and look, I, I'm not saying that York County didn't have any fault in this. You can't agree to it if you can't back it up. And they just couldn't come up with the bonds that was supposed to fund their part of that agreement. And, you know, I talked with Brandon Guffey, who is on the council over there for York County, and he was discussing, look, like, I understand Rock Hill was wrong for this. Now, The county also sent him out because he wasn't a part of the initial agreement, so he could easily dodge those types of critical questions right to his face. And, hey, you know, decent PR move. I'm not mad at it. But he was saying, look, I understand people's point of view that want to blame the county for agreeing to this. 100%. I get that. But now the citizens are going to struggle and be – and it's going to be a detriment to the citizens of this. Like, whoever's right or wrong – Let's try to figure out something. And at that time, it's an awful look for a $16.7 billion net worth dude, the richest owner in the NFL, to say, "Eh, it doesn't matter. I'm just not going to say anything. Like, he could have come out with this public statement a month ago. Like, he could have have just edited it there. But it takes him this long to put out whatever that was to try to blame the city. And, you know, like, it's... It's just so different. Well, you know, just like just like Nick said earlier, if you're going to put some nails in the ground, you got to go out and buy some socket <laughs> wrenches, you know? I mean, tools. 
Yeah, you got to put it, put some screws in there too. You know, come on, why why not? All right, that's maybe that maybe they were doing it wrong. Maybe that's why this whole thing fell apart. I think that's probably it. They were like David Tepper. Look, at that point, I don't blame him. What you're trying to nail this concrete (laughs) structure down with nails doesn't make any sense. I don't even blame him. Um, that's Nick Carboni. Carpenter also works for WCNC, joining us here on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. Please follow him on Twitter at Nick Carboni, WCNC, covering everything, including the Charlotte Hornets here in the city of Charlotte. Nick, it's always fun, man. I want to put this it, picture up. I hope your camera doesn't work next time. So we <laughs> yeah, can I think we just again. ditch the camera and go with that photo. <laughs> I agree. I'm glad you're on board. That's what we'll do. That's Nick Carboni joining us. Thanks for you as a thanks to you as well for joining us here on the Lockdown Hornets podcast, listening to us, making us your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NBA. Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. 